Hello everybody, it's Bridget Plass here. And Adrian as well. <laughs> yeah, and that sounded seriously <laughs> odd, Adrian. I think we'll go back to our normal way tomorrow. What, where I start? Yes, oh, all right, I then. think so. But okay. it, we tried to do something different because <laughs> it is the first one of it's, Sounding the Shallows. Yeah, it's week one. It's no longer days, it's weekly. And yeah. it's Sounding the Shallows. Uh, sounding the Shallows. <laughs> if you if manage I to pronounce to say it. it. Yeah. Um, actually, first of all, though, we wanted to say... And a very sincere and a, a, a really big thank you to so many people who oh. have been with us over the last nine weeks. And we've, we've heard from lots and lots and lots of you. And I can tell you, we honestly love every single communication yes, we do. that we get. So yeah, thank you really so do. much. We really do. And we've had our first anagram. We have, yes. The end of No Shore in Sight and now... It's um, sounding, sounding the, the shallows. shallows, and someone has provided us with an anagram. I'm not sure what it means, but I'll tell you it. An anagram of sh uh, sounding the shallows is Snowland Lighthouses. I'll say mm. that again, <laughs> Snowland Lighthouses. Mm. Now, that's the sort of thing someone might draw, but I'm not quite sure what it means. But thank you very much for that. I, I can't believe the amount of work that must have gone into doing that. <laughs> oh, no, but I'm quite sure there'll be other... Do you call them anagramists, people who do anagrams? I, I think there's probably some other word. That <laughs> probably well, anyway, I'm quite sure that there's some people who might like to have a go at our new, uh, our new words. One of the things that we asked you if you would like to let us know about at the end of our last episode was about legacy it was to do with the fact if you remember we were talking about Rahab and we were talking about the fact that because she looked after the spies that Joshua sent into the city when the walls of Jericho were knocked down just her little tower remained because she'd put out a red handkerchief and uh, and so her little bit wasn't knocked down that was something that remained after everything else had crumbled and we asked you if you'd like to tell us some of the things that you feel has been the legacy from this time and it has been quite fascinating to hear from you so many of you I think quite a few people have been very 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 busy before lockdown that's the impression I get again and again we've heard how good it is to guiltlessly because it's been taken away and you haven't given it up not had to do a lot of the things that you were doing. Some of them may have been fun. There's one person talks about lunches, groups, voluntary work. Um, so many things that she was doing that uh, her husband said she was never in. For her, yeah. the legacy has been maybe getting to know her husband a little bit more, but also just enjoying being given permission to stop. Um, and somebody else talked about their confidence that had grown in them to speak to people in their road, over the road that they hadn't spoken mm. to before. Somebody else talked about having a longer time to pray, just, just a sort of new rhythm, um, a peacefulness that gave... It, it's this permission thing almost, Adrian, to stop, really. Yeah, I think the, the prayer thing is interesting because, because people are... Um, I, um, I, I don't for one moment say people don't tell the truth, but... People are be being very honest about what's happening to them, and sp spiritually, yeah. if you want to put it like that, yeah. people. This this person who's praying much more is really into it, yeah. and really finding that it means something. Yeah. And I really like that. As yeah. a, there's a lot of false fire about, yeah. as Malachi yeah, yeah. puts it. Uh, yeah. And it's good to hear these things. Yeah. It really is. And creating new rhythms in order to actually get a structure. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are creating more of a rhythm of prayer, which I well, think we're, they're Well, we're much more into a morning uh, prayer thing between us now, aren't we? We are. We were. It's, it's kind of organized. I'm only smiling because I think our last one was about bustling about. Oh, and yes, um, yeah. it's a good thing that we're not bustling about so much. But... Then there's Zoom, of course, and we heard from somebody in New Zealand who's found yeah. it tremendously helpful. Well, it's it's really amazing. I mean, he's the scoutmaster in New Zealand, and they've been communicating by Zoom with a scout troop in the Isle of Wight. Yeah. Um, and th I think there's going to be a, some kind of reciprocal thing going on later on. But mm. 
that's that's really energizing mm. isn't it mm. and i have to say thank you to this gentleman who we have heard from a few times because he made a comment in his uh, email that i thought was was really good he said there's nothing like and i've probably got it slightly wrong nothing like being boxed in uh, to get you thinking out of the box well that's <laughs> clever isn't it yes and uh, i think he's probably absolutely right yeah. as well yeah, yeah. So thanks. Yeah, and and one more positive one is 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 an awareness, an awareness that actually they are understanding more about Christians all over the world who can't ever actually meet in reality, who mm. depend upon all sorts of very quiet underground ways of meeting. Yeah. Um, somebody else said that they understood much more about disability, about what it's like to be locked in to your own situation and dependent on other people to do things for you. Mm. But then one or two people, and we had one really, really difficult legacy, which was that she had felt that she was on a bit of driftwood, really, that uh, hardly anybody had called. She'd felt more alone than ever she had in her life. And we know of other people, of course, who've had loss and pain that's never going to go away and mental health situations that have erupted during this time. And we know all about that. And yeah, so yeah, some s- people have had a rubbish, rubbish time, time yeah. rubbish time, not yeah. in a nice boat. And then other people feeling guilty. It's just a time maybe to mm. look at all that and yeah. try and get it in perspective and mm. there's still time to rescue people if they're hanging on to bits of driftwood we're not we're not at the shore yet no that's why we called it um, sounding the shallows <laughs> exactly because we're exactly. trying to work out how to land and what's involved in all that yeah. Um, yeah. I think one of the things about emerging from the total lockdown, and we'll stay with the boats for a bit, <laughs> is that you're aware, really, that you're not quite as wonderful as maybe you thought you were, because you find yourself maybe feeling a little bit envious as you look around, you know. Um, uh, maybe you felt you're in a little tug and there's somebody in a beautiful yacht. Um, maybe, maybe, you know, you haven't been perfect in your thinking well, let's go back to the good old sacred diary now because that particular thing actually happened to us um and this this bit from the diary is is largely based on fact i have to say um <laughs> very much so adrian so for those who don't know bridget and i and uh, our children uh, went to a, a a big festival and it, the, the weather was absolutely dreadful Uh, And this is kind of what happened with a bit of exaggeration. Arrived at Let God Spring into Royal Acts of Harvest Growth around mid-afternoon. Anne and Gerald and I, we erected our new tornado-tough frame tent in no time, despite high winds and sheeting rain. After checking out the toilets, we walked up to the shop. We passed our magnificent new tent standing tall and proud in the face of the gale. A little further on, our magnificent new tent passed us, flying through the air like a huge, mad red and blue sail. (laughs) We caught it eventually, just outside Richard and Doreen Cook's Super Safari Complete Comfort vacation van. I could see Richard inside, drinking tea and reading a Bible in the warm, He nodded and smiled and mouthed the words praise the Lord at me as I wrestled with my appalling pile of soggy canvas. I mouthed something succinct back. Everything was soaked down in wet bridge laundrette when we went down to dry it all. Too late to pitch the tent again when we got back. We went to the Let God Spring into Royal Acts of Harvest Growth office where a wild-eyed person who kept saying this was the last year she'd do it, gave us the key to a tiny refrigerated cowshed where we're about to stay the night in strange contorted positions. Sunday morning. Down to Wetbridge Laundrette again with clothes soaked by rain coming in through holes in the refrigerated cowshed. <laughs> a surprising number of people down there at 7.30 in the morning. One couple who'd spent the night in six inches of water were anxious to get back in time for the marriage fulfilment seminar. Seemed a bit desperate, really. (laughs) Got back and pitched the tent again. Drove pegs through anything 
that flapped. <laughs> so based on truth. And I remember it ever so well, looking at the caravans, looking at the uh, the statutory mobile homes. That's right. And, and it's not feeling very Christian. No, well, it, it, it's not just not feeling Christian. <laughs> it's feeling what you actually feel. Well, that's true. And we hated them and would like to have killed them, really, <laughs> just gently. Temporarily. But the point, one very interesting point, and serious point about that is that... Um, we do have the most dreadful thoughts sometimes. Of course we do. Some things come up in us and we look at them and we think, how could I think that? How could I feel that? Yes. How could I ever? Yeah. Oh, it's awful. Well, I think one of the lessons as we move in and try to get back to whatever in the, within the metaphor of dry land is to, is to just give ourselves a bit of slack here mm -hmm. because... Um, when those things erupt, and they do in me sometimes, just two days ago, one dreadful thought I had. Mm. You, okay, you acknowledge it. You Maybe you laugh a bit at the ludicrousness of it. You put it on a shelf. Yeah, or you give yourself a bit of a telling off. You don't. Very well, I, yeah, quickly you, and just... You can do, but just, just say to yourself, that actually is not what I want to be. Yeah. And I'm going to put that on, on a side. I'm going to remember it so... Uh, you know, it might help to remember that, you know, you need to, to be careful about these yeah. things. And move on, move on. That's what being a Christian is supposed to be, mm. because mm. those things mm. have been sorted mm. in in a mystical way that I can't explain in two minutes, but they've been sorted. Yeah. So let's, let's try and live yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, one little legacy that I didn't mention for me was a real pride, not in myself, but in the way the church has coped and by that I don't mean the major statements not that I've personally had a problem with those but I mean the way the little churches have coped yeah. and if we're thinking still with boats and I think we'll have to leave boats soon but little boats are perhaps more flexible mm. uh, but even the big boats the big strong liners they've broken things down into small boats into little groups of people and there's been a growing sense of community i think mm -hmm. in a way that maybe we've not really valued it may have been there but i'm not sure we'd valued it really so it's, that's it's been an odd thing hasn't it the the main, the big churches mainline churches have been criticized a bit for making certain political comments and not oh, well. commenting on other things but mm. the fact is that in churches all over this country uh, people are working really hard yes um, to make carrying on with food carrying banks, on with, carrying yeah, on with looking things, after neighbors yeah. as of course have lots of other people and i know yeah. we've said oh, that before are, adrian yes, i yeah. heard something on the radio with yeah. somebody who's got a disability and has opened up the uh, the staying in with yeah. two ends on the in yeah. so that there can be oh, zoom I see contact where they're going i that. know and there's a there's a whole community of frog worshippers <laughs> just down the road from here who are doing amazing work with amphibians <laughs> no they're not no, but the, the, there's a lot of stuff going on. Oh, there yeah. is, yeah, yeah, there is, there is. One of the things that um, strikes me is that, that there is a need for care, and a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about over the next few weeks is probably about that. Yeah. But it, it did remind me of a limerick I wrote once, which I'm sure you'll be thrilled to hear. Um, it's uh, It was based on the fact that there was a competition on the back of the times just near the crossword it was um, and it was it was really an advert for taylor's port uh -huh. and this is this is many years ago when we had no money and couldn't afford port wasn't it and we love port especially for communion it gives it a richness just keep going Sorry. so <laughs> um what you had to do was you had to write a limerick in which the words taylor's and port occurred okay and then you sent your limerick to Taylor's with a label from the front of a bottle of Taylor's port. <laughs> so obviously the idea was everybody would buy the port. You'd send it in. One person would win, I don't know, a few bottles of port. And that would be the end of it. So I wrote two limericks. I only, I only read you one of them. Um, this is the one I wrote. And I, I, I don't know. Anyway, this is what I wrote. Any port. Got that? Right. Any port in a storm cried the sailors, while plying their pumps and their bailers. But I said, I think, I would much rather sink a 
life with no guarantee that it's Taylor's. See? Now, would I have won? I don't know. Is there an employee of Taylor's listening? Maybe the time has come to judge that little entry in your competition. Yeah, because we didn't actually have the money to buy the bottle of port that was needed for the we label. No, but it no. is quite important, well, it, isn't it? I, th I think that there is a real danger, and, and it's one that I've encountered, you've, we've all encountered, that because you want to feel safe, mm. you go for the first thing that appears. Mm. That you say, I just want to feel my feet on solid ground. Mm. I don't mm. care what it is, mm. but I think there's a there's a good reason to be a little bit cautious. Yeah, and, and this is a really good time. One or two people have said a time to just bob about, really. We're sticking with the water quite well, actually. But just sort of look and take stock and not rush into anything at the moment, because it is a time for decisions, isn't it? I mean, mm. do you send your children to school? Do you not? There's there's a lot of decisions at the moment that a lot of people are having to make. Shall I go to the shop? Shall I not? How many people should I meet up? Is it all right? All these mm. things. There's a lot of wariness, and in a way, that's amazing. We don't usually have a chance to, to take stock, really. No, we've been pushed into taking stock, really, and... For us too, we're asking ourselves what the future uh, needs to mean for us. It's That's not true. Easy. And also there are some really important decisions to be sorted out. Now, I'll tell you one, we only did this this morning, and some of you will understand how important this is, okay? We both really enjoy coffee. Okay? We do. But when we put our coffee in an, a norm, normal cafeteria, Sometimes Bridget puts it in, and sometimes I do. Yes, I do hope you're listening to this. This is quite it's, serious. It's very, right? very important. Hmm. Now, Bridget, tell people how much you put in. Right, I will. I put in three heaped dessert spoons mm. and a little bit. Right. I put in three level dessert spoons and a very heaped one. Okay? Now, this morning... We finally decided to decide the difference between Bridget's amount of coffee and my amount of coffee. So while Bridget was out, I got a wine glass and I put my three level dessert spoons and a power one into my wine glass. I covered it with a, a kitchen <laughs> towel held on by a rubber band. We do live. We know how to live here, I tell you. And then Bridget came back and I said, the testing bench is ready for you. You did? There was an exactly a, a, a wine glass, exactly the same size. And the coffee container, she took a spoon and she put her. Uh, I put my three, three heaped large ones, ones and my little, little bit one into that one, and then we stood the wine glasses side by side, gave them a little shake to make sure the coffee was level, stood back, and they were exactly the same. They were now. I think God is in that, don't you? <laughs> well, we thought they must be similar because it always tastes the same. Yes, but uh, right, no, that yeah. was a big decision. Yeah, it yeah. was. It and, was. Yeah, it goes alongside other big decisions we've got to make, I think. We also were thinking about the fact that um, this might be the time to be ready to be excited. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. We don't know what's going to happen. We might feel there are deficiencies, inadequacies in us. But you never know. You really, really never know. And some of it is about seeing a small opportunity or a small, small window in your life mm. um, where you could do something that might change things. Mm. We were thinking about this, weren't we, and trying to remember when there was a time when something kind of, an opportunity sort of shot into our lives yeah, well, we we used to work with children in care, and one day we saw an advert in the paper saying that one of the TV companies was looking for ordinary people, but that, that would be us, and was what we were and are, ordinary people to be in a, um, a late-night uh, television program, short television program. And we went through a whole palaver with this. We, we, we had to write something, we had to go up to London, we had to... Um, a B film which was absolutely terrifying and we came home and thought we'll never hear any more about it and finally um, they contacted us someone came to see us and said they'd like Bridget to take part <laughs> that's true, they <laughs> did it was one of the few times in my life 
where I actually was sort of sacrificial. I, I thought, if I'm not nice about this, this is going to be dreadful. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, that's wonderful. And Bridget said, well, did you, do you not mind? I said, well, I mean, it would be nice, but I'm not that bad. Anyway. <laughs> so she went off and started a few programs later. I was involved as well. And that, going to do that, uh, eventually ended me writing articles in that's true. a magazine. And because of that, the publisher contacted me after I'd started doing a column in a... So all I'm saying is one little advert, a bit of thought, mm. and you don't know where it will lead. Mm. So it's always mm. worth just mm. keeping an eye out for things. Again, it's a unique opportunity, isn't it? It's a time that none of us have known before. Uh, where you are looking around and you might see something new that you get involved in, something unexpected that comes to you that you think, well, maybe, maybe this is the time to have a shot at that. Or maybe a time where you can say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. This is the time for me to say no. How interesting this time is, really. Yeah, it is. And it is also a unique time, isn't it, to be aware, to be aware of the dangers yeah, one doesn't want to go on about dangers, but uh, I d we were remembering the fact that when I began this business of going and speaking and stuff, there were some very, very obvious pitfalls. I know, because I banged my knee on several of them. Um, and I wrote something that was really, for me, as a reminder that you've got to be careful. Um, and I'll, I'll read it to you. It's called Ministry. And some of the some of the things in it are kind of fossils, aren't they, they from are. the eighties? The but uh, I've left them in because they were part of that time. I want to have a ministry. I want to be profound. I want to see the folks I touch go spinning to the ground. I want to use a funny voice, mysterious and low. I want to spot uneven legs. I want to watch them grow. <laughs> I want to have a little team, no more than two or three, a totally devoted group whose ministry is me. They'd keep an eye upon my soul and tell me how it looks, and even more importantly, they'd help to sell my books. <laughs> I want to send my prayer list out. Full-colour ones look flash. The ones that say, oh, I'm greatly blessed, and could you send some cash? I'd send them out by first-class post and please the folk who've got them by putting little written bits in biro at the bottom. I want to be a humble star oh at major church events. I want to lead obscure seminars in great big leaky tents. I want to say how I deplore the famous Christian hunters. I want to sign their Bibles and refer to them as hunters. I really, I really want a ministry. I want to alter lives. I want to pray for something dead <laughs> and see if it revives. I do. I want a ministry. I'm sure, I'm sure it's all been planned. And I'll make a start as soon as God removes the job in hand. <laughs> and I think that did help to keep you safe. It had certainly was part of the the safety mechanism. Yeah, 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 it was. So it's a time to be aware. It's a time to take stock. It might be a time to stop. It could also be a time for you to send us some anagrams. Yes, and, true. And anagrams. it would be great to hear about first times as well. Mm. And we'll have a look at those next week, not tomorrow, but next week. And thank you very much for listening to the very first sounding the shallows yes and, uh, absolutely i hope you'll be with us for a few weeks yeah anyway thank you very much and bye -bye. we'll see you soon yeah we will bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.